Have you ever come across the hollow earth theory? It's a theory that suggests that the globe that we live on is actually hollow and that within it lies its own central sun as well as its own ecosystem. Now what's most incredible about this theory is it actually starts to lean into the borders of a hypothesis. Now what a hypothesis is, is compared to a theory which is all made up and just what sounds good, is that a hypothesis is something that's actually kind of been proven. Matter of fact, there are elements to the theory that are lending towards the idea of this actually being science fact. What is this proof that I'm talking about? I'm talking about caverns that have been discovered that supposedly lead into the center of the earth. Now, why do I say supposedly? Well, because the sources of which actually come from pilots, RAF pilots, Air Force pilots that manage to fly and get sucked in to many times by way of a tornado or some type of <laughs> geological event sucked into the hollow of the earth, whereby which they are often greeted by advanced terrestrial beings and then sent on their way back out into our known world. Now, I don't know about you, but the idea of being invited into the center of the earth by advanced beings that live up to thousands of years sounds like a pretty sweet deal. <laughs> but I can't physically get there. And luckily, I don't need to. You see, I have the skill of astral projection. Astral projection is the ability to leave the physical body and go anywhere on Earth, as well as any point in time. Recently, I've been playing around with the Jurassic period and just getting a good eye on those T-Rexes and, and, and other dinosaurs that seem much more colorful than what the history books would depict. They're catching up nowadays though. They're making slight advancements and they're getting more and more close to what they actually look like. I've also been lucky enough to see how the pyramids were built. At some point, you know, during my travels, eight months ago, I was, I was out of body. I was actually in China. I was at a crossroads where there were four stands, two of which were fruit, no, three of which were fruit stands. The other one was a concert. Among all of this activity were the dead. Not many, it was about 10 to 15 people. And as I'm there, just listening to the music, they're playing some very old timey instruments, ancient instruments. I got the idea to visit the center of the earth. Now, what you have to understand about my method is that I do this thing that I call bouncing. And I do it because it makes it very easy to get from point A to point B. Now, what is bouncing? Bouncing is when, whilst I'm standing there in China, I decide to come back to my body, open my third eye, and see another realm in front of me. After which I'd usually leave the body into that realm, especially if it's my bedroom that I'm seeing, or I will leave my body and go to an entirely different terrain. And the reason as to why this is easy is because whilst I'm in my body, I'm in this state known as the hypnagogic state. And whilst I'm in the hypnagogic state, I simply just got to expect as to where I'd like to be and then my pineal gland starts to punch in those coordinates. And then I start to see the imagery of that location. It's very different from, for those of you out there who want to try this, it's very different from images that just float through your head, okay? That are more akin to your imagination or dream. This actually works in the complete opposite way. You have to clear your mind completely. You can't see any imagery. You have to kind of stifle everything as well as your voice. You can't even be thinking about clearing your mind because otherwise you'll be filling your mind with stuff. Well, the thought, right? And so when my mind was completely clear, then I start seeing these locations. And I think in part, 
It's also due to me being conditioned into this astral projection state. A lot of this has become intuitive at this point. I simply just got to lie down and decide to leave the body and everything else takes care of itself. It's kind of like a musician that picks up a guitar and maybe years ago they learned how to pick a specific pattern and they had to really focus on what they were doing. But 10 years later, 20 years later, it all becomes muscle memory. And if you were to ask that same musician as to how it is that they're playing that song, they probably wouldn't be able to give you an answer because at that point it's all become internalized. You see, a long time ago, I would practice astral projection and I, and I would use a system, a 10 step conditioning system that I created over the span of four years. And it would condition myself into the, well, my physical body into the astral projection state, at which point I could always feel like I could leave at any moment's notice. Now, unlike the guitar player, I still remember how I did it, the steps that I took because I built courses on it and I, and I wrote it down in journals. So I could tell you how to do it and I do. I teach a lot of people how to do these things, but not to get off topic here. A lot of that stuff has become habitual. And so whilst I lie down and I just decide to do something like a guitarist would just decide to play a song, whilst I lie down, all of a sudden, the engine starts going and I start seeing different dimensions. And for me, it's just as simple as sliding out and going to that location. And that's exactly what I did. I bounced, I came back to my body, I expected to go to the center of the earth. And at first, at first I started seeing terrain, but I could have been seeing any terrain, you know, that wasn't good enough for me. And so I bounced back to my body and then I just came out of my body and ended up in my room because there are other ways to travel. One in particular that I'm often quite fond of is simply expecting to be in the sky and then walking and falling. I then dematerialize and then I, 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 I teleport. I teleport up in the air and I free fall. I love doing this at night because I can feel the wind and the wetness of the clouds hitting my astral face as I'm descending into the earth. And right before I hit the ground, I often just respawn back in the sky and I come back down. And I just do that for ages sometimes. I thought to myself, what if I do that to get to the center of the earth? What if I just stand up in my room and I just fall? But instead of going up, I go down. <laughs> I was kind of surprised as to how quickly it worked, to be honest with you. I did what they do in the TikTok videos where they fall to the side and then they come back up in a different environment. I fell to the side with the intention to face through the floor and that's exactly what happened. I then found myself barrel rolling through midair, very high up. Uh, the space instantly felt different. And as, as I'm falling throughout the air, I'm taking note of my environment to report back to you. I start noticing a terrain that resembles very much the movie King Kong, you know, when he goes into the center of the earth, but it was kind of mixed also with the terrain of Dragon Ball Z. You know, in China, they have the very tall mountains and they have the, the patches of greenery on top. Well, imagine those, but not so thin. Instead, very, very wide. So wide, you could probably fit a small island on top of each one, you know? And they weren't completely flat on top neither. Sometimes they would kind of come down a little bit. They're more like giant mountains that were just quite steep. And as I'm barrel rolling throughout the air, I can see indentations on the side of the mountain. And these indentations are very strange. If you were to get a pile of flour, you know, that you'd make bread out of, and you were to take a fork and run that fork up that mound of flour, you get these nice streaks running across the mound of flour. Now, in comparison to all of that, imagine being the size of hmm, one tenth of the size of a grain of rice. Okay, you're very small. And those streaks would seem very big, miles in diameter, God knows how many miles laterally speaking, right? And that's how it felt to bear witness to these marks. Honestly, I started thinking that maybe it was some type of mothership, huge ship that had flown up 
and then on its way out just dragged the side of its body along this mountain. And so as I'm falling, I'm not only noticing these, these streaks that run across this mountain, but I'm also noticing a pyramid below me, and I'm seeing all of this, this jungle. I'm trying to see cities, I'm trying to see people, I can't see them just yet. And as I'm falling, I kind of fly to the front of the pyramid, and I just take note of what I'm seeing. And what I'm seeing is a pyramid that has cats built into it. They don't look like the Sphinx, they look very different. What shocked me was the fact that the animals themselves looked like nothing I've ever seen. No, no, no known cat on Earth. A completely different species. And this pyramid was split up with these cats into three sections. So you had a large cat that was kind of leant forward, and then the bottom of the pyramid would be as so. Above the cat, another section of the pyramid, and then another cat. Then you would have the peak of the pyramid. The peak had a kind of balcony to it, you know? And on the inside, as I walked up, I saw a kind of cubby hole, okay? This cubby hole looked like a kind of ventilation system, a, a, a vent, that once you stood in, you could see into the pyramid, okay? This space that I was standing in was about five feet by four feet in width, and it had little holes drilled into it, perfectly arranged. But I was so high up that as I looked in and down into the pyramid, I couldn't see the floor of the pyramid. All I could see was the wall in front of me and the wall to my left, and a glare of light, almost as if there were candles lit up the inside of this pyramid. At this point, I'm thinking, okay, I'm not seeing much of anything. I'm just standing here on top of this thing, and I need to start again. So I willingly take my consciousness back to my physical body and I decide to astral project once more to the center of the earth. I did it the exact same way. I got up in my, in my bedroom and I just fell down. This time I had more control, but I ended up in the exact same place in front of this pyramid. I tried for a third time and the same thing happened. And then I just decided to end the session. Eight months later and I try again. This time, this time, rather than, you know, astral projecting into my room and then free falling down, I just bounced directly from my physical body to the center of the earth. Very different. Again, I saw the scenery. This time I saw a flock of birds that were dancing in unison, perfect unison. It felt like I was at the Antarctic because it was cold, there was snow everywhere. And I looked up and all I saw was blue, so I thought maybe this wasn't the center of the earth, you know? So I tried again. And again, I ended up in some type of snow-like place, only this time I saw a bunch of trees, no birds this time. It felt expansive and it felt very cold, but I wasn't sure if it was the center of the earth, so I tried again. This time when I bounced, I came back to my body, left my body again, because I saw caverns. And within the caverns was this woman. She was wearing a blue sweater and gray uh, trousers. She looked at me, kind of smiled. It was very strange. Uh, she had quite a square face and also wore her hair quite short, uh, shoulder length. I got the feeling that I needed to follow her. And as I followed her, I saw daylight at the end of this cavern. Now to better describe this cavern, it was quite large and it looked like giant teeth were falling from the ceiling, touching the ground, giant teeth, giant rocks. Right before I got the chance to move throughout this opening, I felt like I was blacking out. And then I ended up back in my body. Now, that was bizarre. It usually happens when in certain astral planes, the energy is so different that it kind of just shakes me a little bit. And so I decided to try again. This time, when I tried to get into the center of the earth, I found myself standing in a courtyard made out of crystals, rainbow-like crystals, in that there were shards that were laying flat on the floor, yet they were reflecting a lot of pinks and blues and yellows all over the space. The corridors of this courtyard, the archways, were simple yet complex at the same time. 
parts of it were complex, and then parts became very just straightforward and, and plain. Some parts of the uh, doorways seemed to be broken, as if they had been standing there forever. And then around me, I felt a presence of a being. And as I looked, it looked very much like the environment that I'm in. It was multicolored. I started hearing the word Agatha. And at that point, I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute, is this real? Is this, is this seriously happening to me? As I look around, I start seeing what looks like a crystal tower, kind of like a Windsor Tower and that it's very pointy, and again, that's also made out of the same substance as this courtyard that I'm in. I decided to do a complete reset, just to make sure. I bring my awareness back to my body, and I astral project to the center of the earth, and I find myself standing in the exact same spot. Again, this being is beside me. And as I'm walking, I'm hearing more, Agatha, 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 almost as if it's dancing on the wind. And then bounce back to my body, and then I astral project a third time, just to be sure, because I'm very uh, analytical. I have to vet everything. <laughs> this time, again, I show up in the same spot. I fly up and out, and I look at the kingdom of Agatha that is literally built on the edge of a waterfall. It looks gorgeous. And there are these weird crafts that are just hovering besides Agatha. They're, they're, they look like... They're almost like beetles. Have you ever seen Superman, Man of Steel, how their crafts look? Something similar to that, but much longer. And it was just hanging out there in the air. It wasn't moving, it was static. I thought maybe it was some type of antenna, because as I got further out, I saw another one way off into the distance, and it was hovering at the same height as this larger one. When I got home, I got so excited, I emailed someone straight away and I told them that I knew how the pyramids were built. <laughs> and that I made it, finally. I'm hungry. Now, I will be visiting the center of the Earth more frequently. I'm also going to make a few videos on the Jurassic period, what the dinosaurs look like, as well as to how they built the pyramids. Okay? A lot of people are very close when it comes to their hypothesis, right? <laughs> If you're interested in astral projection, I do have the conditioning process that conditioned me into the astral projection state right now available on my website, ryancrooker.com. I've also got a meditation that creates the illusion that I'm in your room, guiding you throughout specific steps for astral projection. And I have a starter kit for those of you struggling with your mindset going in. Maybe you're stressed out or just, you know, just frustrated at the fact that it might not be working. Check out those courses and stay tuned for the rest of the content.